Hello everyone, welcome to another Victoria 2 video. Today I'll be going over how to play Grand Columbia in the Divergences of Darkness mod, specifically the HPM branch of the mod. Grand Columbia has the most potential out of any nation in the Americas in Divergences, but it's always wasted within the first decade of the game. In order to have an actually successful Grand Columbia game, you must face a few early game challenges. When you click play as Grand Columbia, you're at war with Spain, who is desperately trying to take back control of their empire. Spain has various armies already in your country along with many occupied territories. Grand Columbia's start is like being spawned in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with three sharks circling around you. It may look bad for you right now, but there are a few advantages you do have. Spain only has a few units in your country, and you can easily concentrate your forces to defeat them. Also keep in mind that Spain's largest army is in the south while the rest of their forces are scattered and stretched thin. Now that you have analyzed the situation, you must do a few things. First, fix your budget tab by raising taxes all the way, increasing tariffs all the way, and lowering military spending. This will help your financial situation by making you lose slightly less money during the war. The next step is to start building up your army by making a whole bunch of artillery brigades. Spam out as many of these as possible because your army has almost no artillery. Also research Malthusian's thought as it will help increase your education efficiency in the early game. Very, very important. You should also use your national focus to increase intellectuals in your most populated province, which should be this one. Once you organize all of that, make sure you move all your existing armies to these locations shown on screen. Oh yeah, don't forget the colonized land. You can do it, you might as well. Let's take a look at Texas first. Your army in Mexico is double the size of the Spanish forces in Texas and should be an easy W. Once you either defeat the Spanish forces or force them into uncolonized territory, siege down all of Texas. At the beginning of the next month, you should get an event that tells you you have retaken Texas and will give you 50,000 pounds to help fund your war effort and will also reduce your war exhaustion. Utilize this money to build more units for your army. While you're doing all of that stuff in Texas, your southern army should be around Colombia. If you split up your army in the mountains, the Spanish AI will attack the mountain province, and once they're locked in, you can send the other half to completely destroy the Spanish army. The key to winning in Victoria 2 is to remember that you have a brain and the AI doesn't. However, the one thing the AI is good at doing is constantly retreating, so it might take a while to completely stack wipe the army. The pair region, it's it's you're always gonna lose it. Even if you have the Mr. 55% speed guy, you're gonna like lose almost every one of these brigades when trying to go over there. It's not even worth it. It's just kind of you have to accept that you're gonna lose it. You should at least have be able to retake it once the war is over. But no, there's like no decision to retake it back. It's just once you lose it, you lose it. You can't even get it back. You have to like manually do the war, which I find ridiculous. The next objective that really matters is trying to retake all of the Yucatan and Central America. Retaking those areas will give you an event just like the one for Texas that gives you money and reduces war exhaustion. The event also gives you country flags that eventually allow you to force a peace with Spain without having to make an actual proper peace deal. Spain is going to keep sending more armies to try and stop you while you're trying to siege down these provinces. All you need to do to combat this is to concentrate your forces and let the Spanish AI either go into flat terrain or let them attack you. Once you retake Panama, you can peace out Spain and finally be at peace. With the help of a minus three war exhaustion modifier, the economy should recover fairly quickly, especially with all the precious metal provinces you own. At this point, you may think the event driven flavor is over and you can do whatever you want, but not exactly. There are still things that are going to happen. You just have to wait a little bit. There's a few different things you can do after your research Malthus and thought. There's only two good choices that I personally would do, which would be to research a military staff system in order to get the Dragoons, Hussars, and Kurazirs, that all those inventions out of the way. That way you don't have to keep building regular CAV. Or to research basic chemistry. That way when you research, finish research in idealism after 1840, you can go right to medicine and get all the medicine stuff right away. Personally, I would I go to the medicine route because you need that pop growth, you need that better supply limit, you need your better army stuff. That way you can move your armies around and also your armies won't like completely die as soon as they move into like a single jungle province somewhere. So it's pretty useful to get that early on. 
increased relations with Spain and of Venice and Scandinavia because you're good. You ha you ha get the decisions to buy the islands from them. So you can like get all of Florida, Cuba, Haiti, Jamaica, all this, all these places you can get essentially for free. Oh yeah. Also build ports. Please build ports. You must build ports. Don't forget to build ports. After 1840, Grand Colombia gets an event called the Congress of Andagoya, which essentially decides whether your country will survive or fall apart. The first event triggers a series of other events where there are various options to choose from. The mod tries to make it hard for the player to select the correct options by purposely giving no description to the options. You could play a guessing game to figure out the right path, or if you don't like wasting time, you can look at the mod files. Here's what you need to know. There are three different paths that Grand Columbia can take. Colombian Unity, Granada and Separatists, or the Dismantlement of Grand Columbia. Each of these paths has a country flag tied to them, which is then put onto different decisions. You want to click the Columbia Unity decisions for every event because if you don't, Grand Columbia won't be so grand anymore. Here are the events that you'll most likely get and which options to choose. And yes, abolishing slavery will destroy your country. If there's an event that you got that I didn't show, just look into the mod folder and look through the events folder until you see the Congress of Andagoya. It will tell you which country flag each option gives you for the event. If you did the event chain correctly, you should get an event called the Success of the Congress of Andagoya, and it will give you some more reforms. Once this event chain is done, it's mostly smooth sailing from here. The only troubles you will face after this point is the event war with the Incan Empire. Cusco will be given to the Incas through an event, and you have to defeat them in order to get it back. All you have to do is not attack in the mounds, and let them attack you. If you do this, you should be fine. For the first 20 years of the game, you are also likely to experience a decline in your force limit. Most of your provinces have low pops, so it may take a while for soldiers to come back unless you actively encourage more through national focuses, which will solve the problem, but slow down your literacy growth. After this, you are truly free to do whatever you want. You can conquer the Chenku or focus on conquering the Incas. Once you get your literacy up around the 1870s, you can focus on building a large navy to challenge the other great powers or focus on your industry. You can also be like me and just sit back and watch your immigration and population numbers go up. The possibilities are endless. If you've never played Grand Columbia in Divergences of Darkness, hopefully now you can be confident and conquer all of Spain as revenge. Thank you guys for watching. I know the next video was supposed to be Paraguay, but I ran out of time to finish it before I started school again. Most of my videos are unscripted and it's easier just to hit record and to start rambling. But when it comes to editing, it takes forever. I don't have the time anymore to sit through and edit my rants. So this is my first attempt at writing a proper script and doing a shorter, more informative video. If this video turns out to be a success, I'll continue to do some of these small nation guide videos. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments and I'll see you later.